So we've got two more connectives to talk about, uh, the conditional and the biconditional. The, the conditional is is really the meat and potatoes of mathematics. It's, it's this if then statement. Right? And you see that the way the way we say this, the, the key words that should, you should look for are if and then. All right, so here, if I let P be it's raining and I let Q be I'm wet, I would represent this, right? The math symbol I'm going to use is an arrow. And, and I would read this um, just like you see it in the sentence, if P then Q. All right, so just like we, we did with and and or, we need uh, kind of a standard truth table for this. And this is one that, that gets students every once in a while because you have to be very literal about what this is saying. All right, so let me do what we always do, right? I'm just going to copy the P's over and the Q's over. Okay, so what this statement is saying is it's saying if you if we're standing outside and it's raining, then you can conclude that I'm going to be wet. And it's saying nothing else, right? It's saying nothing about what's happening if it's not raining. It's not saying that I can't somehow become wet by other means. All right, so let's, let's think about this, right? It's raining outside. And I'm wet. That's the first line. Two truths. This is a true conclusion. The, the statement does say that this is what must happen. All right. So how about the second one? It's raining and I'm not wet. Okay. The statement doesn't allow for that. The statement is saying if it's raining and I'm standing outside, then I am going to be wet and no other conclusion is acceptable. So this is false. Now, here's where students start to get into a little bit of trouble. Let's say it's not raining. Is it possible for you to be wet? Well, yeah, I know you just got out of the shower or something. There, there's other things that could cause you to be wet than water falling from the sky. So this is possible. And finally, it's not raining and you're not wet. Yeah, obviously that can happen as well. So this is also a possible outcome. So this is our truth table, right? If, if you're doing the index cards that I suggested back when we talked about ands and ors, this is one that you should add to your collection, right? Just have it in front of you as a reference when you're working through these, uh, when you're working through these practice problems. So let's try one out, right? I've, I've got um, a, a truth, uh, a statement here, it's a compound statement. And it has our new symbol in it. So let's let's get a table here. And we're going to do this just like we always do this, right? I've, I've started off with all the values of P and Q. Now let's, let's fill in the P's and Q's in the body of the table. So I've got a P here. That's true, true, false, false. I've got a Q here. That's true, false, true, false. And then here I've got a not Q. So that's going to reverse the Q values, false, true, false, true. Now I can start filling things in. Parentheses first, just like always. So I'm going to do this or, excuse me, this and. And remember, an and is only true when both of the inputs are true. And that only happens here on the first row. So I'm going to have true, false, false, false. And that is the simplified version of this whole statement. So let me do my little cleanup here. There we go. So this whole statement kind of condensed down to this one column. So now to get my conditional, I'm going to compare this column and this column. And again, I have a way of remembering this. Um, a conditional is only false. If you have a T on the left and an F on the right. So I'm saying, okay, where do I have that? Um, well, on the first row, right on the first row, I've got a T and an F. So this is false. Everything else is true. And now we're done.
That's my final result. All right, so we've, we've got one last uh, one last uh, co uh, connective. It's this biconditional statement. All right, and the, the phrase that you look for to identify a biconditional is this if and only if. Right, and so, sometimes, um, if you read a, a text that's a little more technical, you'll see this written this way, if, if you ever see that, it means if and only if. And what this is saying is the two statements on either side are equivalent. They are interchangeable, right? Saying that a number is even is exactly the same thing as saying it's divisible by two and vice versa. Saying a number is divisible by two is exactly the same as saying that it's even. They mean the same things, okay? Either they are both true or they are both false, nothing in between. And that is in fact how we're gonna fill in our truth table here, right? I'm gonna do true, true, false, false. I'm just copying over the P's and Q's. So this statement is true when both of the individual statements are true or both of them are false. Nothing in between. That is our biconditional truth table. Again, one that I would put on an index card, right? When, when you're just practicing, just getting used to this stuff for the first time. All right, so what's next? Well, um, these conditional statements, they actually can be written in four different versions. Right now, I, that, that's usually how this is said, and it's, it's a little a little sketchy because not all of them are equivalent. Okay, but if we start with P implies Q, you'll see in the next lecture, there are actually four different rearrangements of that conditional statement, each of which has its own special name.